good afternoon students welcome back to digital electronics and logic design online video lecture series we have been discussing the fourth unit and the name of the fourth unit is data converters which are the ICs which is used to convert the one form of data into another form to get the accuracy and the noise free in the signals so now half of the uh, fourth unit is completed with the one form of the converter such as uh, digital to analog converters now we left with the another converters that is nothing but analog to digital converters we can call it is adc or a by c a by d converters so i'm going to continue my lectures with the another type of uh, converters that are uh, analog to digital converters in short we can call it is adc so if you take any digital communication system in the world which involves the both the converters such as analog to digital converter and the digital to analog converters so in this class i am going to explain the block diagram and the necessity of uh, analog to digital converters and then after that we are going to see the various types of uh, uh, analog to digital converters in the syllabus we have the three types of uh, analog to digital converters whether the discussion of those three and this fourth unit will be completed that means uh, in the analog to digital converters we have to study the three more converters and already in the digital to analog converters we have studied the three converters such as weighted resistor r to 2 or uh, ladder type dac and the last one we also discussed inverter inverted r to 2 or ladder type dac so as i discussed in the previous classes these are the converter which converts the analog form of data into the digital form then before going to have the uh, conversion and the various types of converters first we must go with the what is analog and what is the digital as i said earlier the real world is completely deals with the analog signals only the physical quantity which continuously varies with respect to the time is called the analog signal that means it is a continuously varied signal and continuously valued signal such as temperature speed with the infinite possible values in between so if you take the time it is a infinite values that is from the minus infinite to the plus infinite in this duration of time if a physical quantity a quantity continuously varies then that signal is named as the analog signal so temperature is is a analog signal because it keep on varies in the seconds to second it is going to vary and even the microsecond to the microsecond also there is a small variation in the temperature if you go with the speed of any bike and it is continuously varied with respect to the time that means it is an analog signal a signal which is said to be analog that means it is a, a real valued function which can be varied with respect to the time and it is continuously varied with respect to the time that is called it is an analog signal in analog signals we can have the infinite levels of amplitude from minus infinite to the plus infinite we can find the infinite time intervals and the, at every time instant of time if at every instant of time we can have the different amplitude of the signal thus is analog signal coming to the digital signal these uh, signals can have only the two amplitudes such as zeros and ones only that means any any signal can be quantized any signal that may be uh, analog signal continuous time signal that can be quantized to the zeros and ones only zeros and ones only so here the point is noted that we have the continuous time signal that is analog signal we have to convert that is into the zeros and uh, ones by making use of some uh, methods various methods such as uh, flash type methods uh, successive approximation method and the dual slope method all these uh, techniques we will be using to convert the analog signal into the digital one Digital is a signal which can have the only two amplitude levels such as a 0 and 1 only. Discretely valued signal such as integers encoded in the binary. If you go with the uh, uh, integer 10 that will be encoded into the binary that is 1010. If you go with the 5 is an integer number or the decimal number 
that can be converted into the binary form or the digital form that is 101. So now analog to digital converters we can call it is ADC, A by D and A to D converters and converts analog signal into the digital signal. Analog means it is a continuous vary, continuously varied signal and the digital signal that can have only two amplitudes such as zeros and ones only. So analog signals, so just now I have explained the analog signal. It is continuously varied with respect to the time, directly measurable quantities in terms of some other quantity. Examples, thermometer and mercury height rises as the temperature rises. That means the body, uh, temperature of a human body is not constant. It can vary with respect to the time. Car of the speedometer also, these two examples just now I have explained in the previous slide. The digital signal, digital signals have only two states. As I said, for the digital computers, we refer the two binary states such as 0 and 1. 1 can be on and 0 can be off. We can represent 1 can be on and the 0 can be off. So if you go with the uh, example for the digital signal light switch can be either on or off. Door to your room is either open or closed. By like that you can do. Then what is, what is the basic principle which is involved in the analog to digital converter? The basic principle of the operation is to use the comparator. We will be using the comparator. Comparator principle to determine whether or not to turn on a particular bit of the binary number output. Anyway, we have studied in the analog electronics subject. Comparator can be designed with the operational amplifier that is IC741. The function of the comparator when we give the two input signal to the operational amplifier, it is going to compare that one. It is going to compare those two signals. So in this case, in the analog to digital converter also, we will be using the comparator to compare the two signals. If a signal is, if A is a signal, A and B are the signal, if A is greater than B, then that uh, it will be set to the output to give the 1. If the A is less than uh, uh, 0 or equals to B, then that set to the set to give the output uh, from the operational amplifier is 0. Like that, whatever may be the signals, two signals we will be giving, in which the one signal is the reference signal and another signal the signal which we wanted to convert into the digital form. So for the operational amplifier, we will be having the two input signals, two terminals. One is an inverted terminal, another one is a non-inverted terminal. In those two terminals, we are applying one terminal. One terminal is, is applied with the reference voltage. To the another remaining terminal, we will be giving the analog signal which we wanted to convert into the digital form. So now the operational amplifier is going to compare those two signals. One is a reference signal, another is a analog signal which we wanted to convert into the digital form. If analog signal is greater than the reference signal, then the output of the amplifier is set to the one. If the analog signal is less than or equals to the reference voltage, then that will be the output of the operational amplifier set to zero. This is about the a basic operation which is involved in the analog to digital converters. So now it is a typical for an analog to digital converter to use the digital to analog converter to determine one of the inputs to the comparator. So here in, in, the achieving, in achieving the analog to digital converter, analog to digital converters, we are using the digital to analog converter also. Just now I have explained if you take any digital communication system in the world which involves the both the analog to digital converters and the digital to analog converters also. Here the point is very noted that we have discussed the digital to analog converters first because if you go with the analog to digital converter there you require the digital to analog converter also. So in designing of digital analog to digital converter, we will take the help of uh, digital to analog converter, which is already we have studied in the starting classes of the fourth unit. That is uh, digital to analog converter, such as uh, uh, weighted resistor uh, digital to analog converter, R2 to R ladder type and inverted R2 to R ladder type. Then just now I have explained whatever may be the analog signal that is a continuous time signal that is X of T. We can represent the analog signal can be represented with the X of T. 
and whatever may be the variations in that, whatever may be the variations in the XFT, that is that is converted into the only binary bits, that is uh, binary digits. We can call them as bits. So now you can have these possible outputs. As the input signal is varies, then that is going to give any one of these possible inputs, possible outputs, such as uh, we can represent that is with the zero zeros, all zeros, uh, with the all zeros to all ones. So now, for example, here you are having the XFT. You're, here you are having the XFT is having the voltage such that the total maximum voltage, for example, I am having the analog voltage that can varies from the 0 to 8 volts. That can be varies from the 0 to 8 volts, assume there are 0 to 7 volts. That 0 can be represented in the digital form triple zero. One can be represented as 001. Like that last 7th voltage, 0 to 7 voltage. That means what? It can have the divisions that is 0 to 1 volt, so that this one, 1 to 2 volt this one, 2 to 3 volt this one, like that the last voltage is about the 7 to 8 volts or the 6 to 7 volt this one. That means what? For every variation in the input signal, there is a, a corresponding conversion in the digital form. This is the diagram. So now, see this one, this is XFT, XFT is a input signal that has plotted on the XF that is plotted on the X axis where Y is nothing but it is the output it is the output is nothing but that will be in the zeros and one that is in the digital form this is the block diagram of analog to digital converter XFT is analog signal and uh, this bits is nothing but it's a Y of T it is the output signal in the uh, zeros and ones so well. so here to here then I am applying the one voltage first step of voltage that is here to here, during that uh, voltage, I am applying the zero volts of the XFT. If the zero volts is applied, zero volts is applied so that uh, zero volts will be converted into the digital form that is zero only. And after that, we are going for the zero volts to one volt, zero volts to one volt, so that I can get the, uh, uh, I can get the, the directly, I can get, if I go, if I change the input signal from zero to one volts, because it is analog signal which is continuously varies with respect to the time. First one is about the zero volts, so that the output is also zero. Now my input signal got changed from zero to one volts. If it reaches the one volt, then uh, that will uh, convert it into double zero one. This is the thing. And now again, one volt to two volt, the input signal varies so that you can get the uh, digital form of data that is zero one like that. And the six six volts to the seven volts, it is the uh, largest voltage you can apply that is uh, that can be converted into the uh, triple one. What amount of voltage maximum voltage we have been applying? We have been applying the voltage about the seven volts. We have been applying the voltage at 7 volts from 0 to 7 volts step size is 1 so that 0 to 1 is 1 voltage 1 to 2 another voltage first one is 0 is 1 voltage 1 to 0 to 1 is another 2 to uh, 1 to 2 is another 2 to 3 is another like that 6 to 7 is the last one and this is about the uh, quantization is the process of converting the sampled continuous valued signal into the discrete valued data then what is quantization? One may ask the what is quantization? The based on the number of input signal, based on the uh, number of input signal, we have to quantify that, we have to quantify the uh, required, required binary data which has to be converted, which has to be provided at the output side. Then uh, in how many number of, in how many number of bits the given analog signal can be quantized that is nothing but it is a quantization quantizing the number of possible states at the converter can be at the output side that is n we can call it is n n is equals to 2 power of n and here n is nothing but the small n is nothing but the number of inputs where n is the input when is a, n is the number of bits in the analog to digital converter for example if 3 bit analog to digital converter so that how many lines we require 3 bit means 8 lines we require some uh, triple zero to triple one one two three four five six seven eight so like that analog quantization size is just now i have explained that is uh, zero volts to the first step then v maximum to v minimum that is v maximum we can take that is 10 volts and the v minimum is about the zero volts by 8 that is about 1.8 total divisions are 8 
and the total voltage we have been applying uh, 10 volts from 0 to 10 volts then the step size is equals to 1.25 volts step size means what this is the step size here to here this is a step size here we have been applying what here we have been applying the 10 volts from here to here 1.5 volts here to here uh, it is uh, 2.5 it is 3.75 it is the uh, uh, 5 volts then like that up to the 10 volts you can have the 8 divisions this one so that this is the step size then analog to digital conversion two step process and in the process of analog to digital conversion and a, B, a, a by d conversion we have to go with the two step processing process that is quantizing that means whatever the input signal is there that has to be the breakdown into the number of output uh, required divisions breaking down analog value is set of finite states at the output side then encoding that means what after dividing after quantizing every finite state every finite state has to be converted it into its equivalent binary form or the digital form encoding encoding is nothing but assigning the codes to the familiar form of data assigning a digital word or the number to the each state and the matching it, it to the input signal step one just now i have explained these things that means what we we are choosing we have chosen the voltage that is uh, 0 to 10 volts and we are assuming n is equals to 3 n is equals to small n is equals to 3 that means 2 power of 3 means 8 so that 0 to 10 volts will be divided by the 8 so that each will have the 1.25 so first output state is 0 that will be from uh, input signal is range is from 0 volts to the 1.5 volts second output stage we can get that is uh, 1 and that is from the 1.5 1.25 to 2.50 Last one is 8.75 to 10, which will be the 8th state. 0 to 7 means it is the 8th state. Step 2, we have to encode. How many states are there? We have the 8 states, that is 0 to 7. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the 8 states. And uh, each state is converted into its uh, equivalent binary by making use of the coding form. So, in a uh, coding form, we will be using the encoder. Encoder is, an, a, combi is a combinational circuit. It is a digital combinational circuit which gives the which gives the uh, required binary form for a each and every uh, binary each and every decimal data this is assignment then sampling then how many number of divisions we have to make at the output side that will be divided by that will be defined by the sampling it is a process of taking a sufficient number of discrete values at the at a point on the waveform that will define the shape of the waveform quantization simply we, we are having the continuous time signal by making use of the sampling we can take the sufficient number of discrete values sufficient number of discrete values at point on a waveform that we will define the shape of the waveform the more sample you take the more accurate you will get define the waveform that is uh, this is very very important point we have to go with the analog to digital converter with the more sampling points because for every instant of time we can have the one particular digital value it converts the analog signal into the series of impulse each representing amplitude of the signal at that given point just now i have explained this is about the xft xft we know that it is a continuous time signal it is a continuous time signal it has been varying with respect to the time it has been varying with respect to the time so that if you go with the x-axis that is about the uh, independent variable if you take the y-axis that is about the x of x of x of t that is the amplitude of the continuous time signal or the analog signal now what we can say here we are having some samples here to here we can define it is a wavelength here to here we can call it is a wavelength in this uh, defined wavelength i am taking some samples i am taking some sample here to here actually original wavelength and here we are defining some samples and here also we are defining some samples so that the approximation by having the various uh, by having the more number of sample just now i have explained the point by having the more sample we can have the more accurate results at the output side so that i am taking the more sample that means what i wanted to define the digital signal i wanted to define the digital data at uh, uh, more number of uh, samples this is uh, samples this whatever the orange circles are there these are nothing but samples 
So by making use of this process, we can have the analog to digital conversion. There are three types of uh, analog to digital converters. One is flash type. It is also called as flash type. It is also called as parallel comparator type called ADC. ADC stands for analog to digital converter. Next one is a digital ramp, dual ramp, counter slope, uh, analog to digital converter. And the last one is about the successive approximation. So third one is a very, very important uh, uh, analog to digital converter and which is very important in the external examination point of view. In the fourth unit, it is very simple and the easiest unit among all the digital electronics and the logic design uh, uh, subject. If you concentrate more on the third unit, you can get the maximum marks from the uh, third unit. Uh, anyone's can, uh, minimum, anyone can get the minimum of the 15 to 20 marks from the fourth unit that is data converters which have the two data converters analog to digital and the digital to analog converter. So then I am going with the first type that is a, a flash type that is a parallel a counter type the analog to digital converter and before going to explain the uh, flash type analog to digital converter I wanted to go through some basics which are involved in the analog to digital converter. An analog to digital converter produces the digital output that proportional to the value of the analog input signal. When an analog signal is processed an analog to digital converter is used to convert the analog form of data into the digital form. So we have studied the block diagram of everything. Basically, analog to digital converter is a quantizing process whereby analog signal is converted into equivalent binary word. So then there are the various types of uh, uh, types of analog to digital converters are there in which the first one is a parallel uh, uh, comparator type or the flash type ADC. Then we are going with the description of the flash type uh, uh, analog to digital converter. This is the first one is the flash type analog to digital converter. This is the simplest analog to digital converter. At the same time, the fastest and expensive technique one. It is the simplest, but it can provide the very fastest conversion. But due to these advantages, we can get this uh, compare. We can get this uh, converter in the expensive uh, uh, cost. It consists of resistor divider network and uh, uh, one comparator that is nothing but the operational amplifier and the line encoder, line encoder uh, mostly it is a priority encoder. Priority encoder is a combinational circuit which can uh, uh, assign the codes for the uh, input signal which has the more priority. So now at each node of the uh, resistive divide, at each node of the resistive divide a comparator voltage is available since all the resistors have uh, equal values the voltage levels available at the nodes also equally divided between the reference voltage and the ground so but as the number of and, uh, and the uh, as the height of the resistor value is increasing then the voltage also increases input voltage also increases because the input to what the uh, signal we have been applying that is a continuous time sig signal and it is an analog signal so here the point to be noted, we have been using some resistor divider network, resistor dividing network, so that that resistor dividing network is going to divide the complete, complete uh, uh, voltage, complete voltage into the equal values such that every node will have the equal voltage. Comparator compare the analog input voltage VA with the node voltages. So we have been applying the one voltage that is a analog voltage VA such that that voltage has to be converted into the uh, digital form by comparing that voltage is with the uh, that voltage is with the node voltages. The priority encoder holds the analog input voltage into the digital form. Then I have explained what is the necessity of comparator. The comparator here it consists of series of comparator. Each one comparing the each one is comparing the input signal to a unique reference voltage. This reference voltage is nothing but it is a it is a node voltage. Node voltage is compared with the uh, analog voltage which we wanted to convert into the digital form. The analog uh, the, the comparator output connects to the inputs of a priority encoder such that the priority encoder is encodes the analog form of data into the digital form with the priority wise 
if the signal is uh, it, it detects the signal with the more priority then that will be encoded first and after that it is going to take the immediate next priority uh, input signal such that again that will be converted into the digital form so the comparator output is connects to the input of the priority encoder obviously encoder is a digital circuit which converts the analog form of data into the discrete or the familiar form of data into the coded one so this is about the 3 bit flash type circuit this is very very important here this is the input signal it is a analog signal which is continuously varying with respect to the time this signal we wanted to give and this signal here we will be giving and that signal is connected to the all the positive terminals all the positive terminals of operational amplifier how, how many operational amplifiers we have we have the seven operational amplifier one two three four five six seven all the positive terminal all the seven positive terminals of the operational amplifiers are connected with the input signal that input signal that is a uh, uh, analog signal this is a analog signal and now we will be applying one reference voltage with the uh, resistive uh, uh, divider network this is a resistive divider network uh, this is here we will be applying the reference reference voltage so that uh, at the node that will have one voltage and the another node that is uh, for the uh, uh, amplifier 2 we will be having the another node like that this v reference is going to equally divided v is going to equally divided at the each and every node so that how many nodes we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and the last one is this one so here we will be giving so that here this is about assume that it is having the signal uh, uh, analog signal is from the 0 volts to 10 volts so that here it takes here it takes the 0 0 will be converted into 0 only and the next one I am going with the 0 volts to the 1.25 so that this will going to have this will going to have 0 and here this is having the voltage is what now 1.25 volts 1.25 volts and it is the reference voltage it is a reference voltage it is connected here such that that if reference voltage is divided so that as the voltage is here the VA is increasing from the 0 to the 0 to 0 to 1.5 volts and here there is no put no voltage is applied remaining all the voltages so that this is only input so that that uh, 1.25 uh, uh, voltage will be taken as a input by the priority encoder that will be converted into the digital form then now here you will get it will get the output it will get the signal from 1.25 to the 2 1.25 to the 2 here this is at the 1.25 and this is at the uh, 2.50 by comparing these two it is having the more priority so that it will goes to the priority encoder such that 2.5 will be converted into the DC then coming to here now 2.5 to 3.75 and it is at the 1.25 it is at the 2.5 and it is at the 3.75 again so that it will be having the more priority so that it will be converted into the DC the digital signal so likewise you can go with the operation which is involved in the flash type or the parallel or the parallel comparator type uh, analog to digital converter as the analog input voltage as the analog input voltage exceeds the reference voltage at each comparator the comparator output will sequentially saturate to the high the priority encoder generates the binary number based on the highest order active input ignoring all the other active input just now i explained this one this is the analog signal input and this is the digital signal input with respect to the time you can go with then advantages and the disadvantages i can explain so just now I have explained the introduction in the introduction of the analog to digital convert these are the simple in terms simple in terms of operational theory just we will be having only comparators and as well as only priority encode and it is most efficient in terms of speed and fast but it is very expensive lower uh, uh, resolution that means what if the if you wanted to get the more accurate one we have to make use the more number of uh, uh, comparators such as uh, operational amplifiers. So this is only the disadvantages so that uh, we can go for the another type of uh, uh, ADC that is called dual slope ADC that is uh, 
another important uh, uh, analog to digital converters which is the two more analog to digital converter this complete fourth unit is going to be successfully covered and such that we can see the fifth unit that is memories uh, memories also very simple and uh, in as per my uh, point of view first three units in the digital electronics and logic design the completely design the, the, the that designing part is there circuit designing is there in that whereas in the fourth and fifth unit uh, we are having the some uh, analog to digital converters and the fifth unit deals with the memories how the binary data can be stored in the uh, digital integrated circuits in the memory is that such as ram ram e e p ram and e e p ram and all these how these can be used uh, to store the binary data binary information in the form of bits we have to discuss in the fifth unit so in tomorrow class i am going to complete my the fourth unit such that we can see the fifth unit thank you student and thank you so much